Most people stare up into space with wonder, thinking of what's behind the clouds and enormous galaxies. Yet we have this almost alien world on our own planet just teeming with life. It's a world completely outside and out of mind. My name is Dexter Raphael A. Gawigan from Great Old Stemme, and I would like to welcome you to today's lesson on health optimizing physical education for we will be utilizing a power presentation by using this platform of YouTube to help us learn together. I'll look forward for your cooperation and listening. I was tasked to discuss and give you an overview of what we can expect from this module 2, lesson 3 pertaining to aquatic recreational activities, particularly the excitement, what to know, and house of scuba diving. So before we proceed to our lesson proper, let us first define several important terms that we are going to encounter during this lesson. So for the first word, we have the descending, which means in scuba diving is to sink or moving down or dropping down from the water surface to underwater. Second, we have the ascending, which is in contrast of descending, meaning this is the going up or moving upwards from underwater to the water surface. Third one is the buoyancy, which simply means the ability or tendency to float in water or air or some other fluid. In relation to that, we have the neutrally buoyant, which is the main goal of a diver when descending to align themselves perfectly on the water column. And lastly, we have the scuba diving, which is a diving method that uses a regulator and a scuba tank filled with compressed air, unlike in snorkeling that uses only a snorkel to breathe when being with the waters. So if you are ever wondering on what scuba diving really looks like, let us first have an activity wherein we are going to look for the most famous scuba diving spots around the planet. So this is according to Pandochip.com. So firstly, we have here the Cancun Underwater Museum in Mexico. This features some old statues and other marine life. This has a perfect climate, which is beach friendly all year round. Secondly, we got here the Fernando de Ronha in Brazil, which is a famous spot featuring tunnels, canyons, rocks, and other marine life as well. This place allows not to wear a wetsuit since the water is already warm due to the south equatorial current. Thirdly, we feature the renowned Red Sea diving spot in Egypt. This place features coral reefs, dolphins, shipwrecks, and marine jewels. Fourth on the list, we have here the Jellyfish Lake in Palau. Don't be afraid because they do not sting and you can die between them. And to complete the list, of course, we have here the famous Great Barrier Reef in Australia. So before we move on, let us first look at the video to somewhat experience the fun of scuba diving. It's one of the world's greatest living wonders. The largest living structure on Earth. An ecosystem of extraordinary diversity. Where the tiniest creatures live in harmony with the rest. Great Barrier Reef. Come with us on an exploration of this magnificent and remarkable environment. Through the eyes of one who grew up here, as she shares her journey with others committed to protecting it. We can achieve anything we set our minds to. 
but we need to work together. It's about making a difference. When I'm older, I want to know that I did my best to leave this place better than I found it. Great Barrier Reef. Experience the wonder. A film for IMAX and giant screen theaters. So this place is great for beginners and professionals according to research, as well as it has the biggest coral reef in the world with crystal water as the extra. So moving on. This slide here will give you an overview of what you can expect from this lesson. So as you can see, I divided the lesson into five parts. First, the task number one, together with the history of scuba diving. Second, the watch of scuba diving plus the basic equipment. Third, the important skills needed in scuba diving. Fourth, the health-related benefits of scuba diving and fit principles. And lastly, you will be given the opportunity to answer the different learning tasks that we will review later. So let's get going to the first topic. So what we have here on this slide is a task number one which pertains to our review activity wherein we are going to answer questions regarding our learnings on the previous lessons in lesson one and lesson two. So for the directions, in the previous lessons, you have learned about snorkeling, kayaking, and canoeing. So before you learn another activity in aquatic, recall those learnings you had and take time to answer the following questions. Number one, what is snorkeling? Number two, what is the difference between kayak and canoes? And number three, what are the health-related benefits of paddling? Let's get going and have this interesting history of scuba diving. So this contains several important people that conceptualize the beginnings of this aquatic activity. Way back then, people only uses hollow reeds, which is a tube-like hard plant which allows the person to breathe underwater by connecting the diver's mouth to air from the above water surface. This is what it looks like. So in 1300s, a simple cauldron in the shape of a bell was utilized to trap the air inside a container. And in 1960, Edmund Haley began to introduce the renowned diving bell, which is prevalent by the time. So this is the diving bell wherein it features a large bell with two people inside, a smaller diving bell for the person who is on the surface underwater, and a barrel to, replen to replenish the air for the bigger diving bell. While in 1715, Lethbridge built the diving engine. As you can see, this is the underwater oak cylinder supplied with compressed air from the surface. Jumping to 1823, Dion invented a small helmet attached with a hose for air from the surface. This is what it looks like. Then, then moving on, we have the inventions of James in 1825, the full-time scuba that features a cylindrical bell for air reservoir, while in 1837, Sieva innovated the closed diving suit to pair the helmet of the arm. So this is what it looks like. Then we have here the first diving school of the Royal, Royal Navy in 1843. And this is their class picture. So getting the pieces together, ben, Benoit and August but patented the Aerofor. This is the Aerofor. This important invention is a steel tank with compressed air that has parts like holes, fobs, and mouthpiece. Equally important, we got the self-contained diving gear by 
Henry flews in 1867, these uses compressed oxygen and not compressed air. And the latest in the timeline, Jack and Emil, in 1943 invented the aqualung which remains to be what we know as the scuba of the modern day. So this is the aqualung. So what do you think this is? Let us click and see what fun it could bring. So this is a photo album that contains some images that were scattered just by scuba diving. So turning the page, we have the ancient sculptures, the Moai statues in Mexico and the famous underwater statue of Jesus Christ. Next page, we got a photo of a shipwreck of Titanic. The next page, we have the images of fascinating deep sea creatures such as these giant jellyfish, the goblin shark, and the renowned the devil of the sea. Turning into the next page, we have the ancient artifacts of Egyptian tombstones, lost statues, and the lost Roman city and my pyramids and of course we can also encounter some creepy stops like this car which is 13,000 year old you can also look for some other interesting discoveries brought by scuba diving that aren't present on the slides and share that on the comment box below and let us see who got the best ones so going back to the context contents we just finished the first topic about task number one in history of scuba diving. So let us go let us get going to the next slide which we will talk about scuba diving and basic equipment needed. So this is the lesson proper. I hope that everyone is still tuning in, in their phones and computers because our lesson is just getting hot up. You may open your module on page 22 to catch up with me. Thank you. So what is scuba diving? According to what I have searched, it is primarily executed for the attraction of the unreachable and mysterious undersea road. Scuba diving is a method, diving method where a diver uses a regular as the breathing apparatus in a tank with compressed air which enables the diver to breathe normally underwater. Focusing on the acronym of SCUBA, it pertains to self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Again, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus or SCUBA. So moving on, I myself still haven't tried SCUBA diving since my body so it can't understand to float by itself on water. But is it hard to try for even like me? So according to Dive Training Magazine, scuba diving is one of the easiest to learn. While you're gliding around enjoying the underwater sights, you're engaged in only three basic skills, floating, kicking, and breathing. Of course, there's more to it than that becoming proficient at using the equipment and developing the knowledge of scuba concepts and safety procedures. But if we can breathe through your mouth, chances are you can learn to scuba dive. Perhaps I'm convinced and will try to something with my peers. Moving on to the next slide is the basic equipment of scuba diving. First, we have here the dive mask for us to see the beauty of the underwater world. Number two is the snorkel, which is a breathing tube that allows us to inhale on itself only when swimming only face down on water surface. Number three is the regulator. This one is an important equipment since this is connected to the scuba tank that let us breathe underwater normally. Moving on, we have here the number four, which is the BCD or buoyancy control device, which helps us to control the positioning in the water column. 
This is the jacket that has several valves for us to control and attaining the right amount of points. Number five, we have the regulator again, since we have lots of that. This in particular delivers the steady of supply, steady supply of air from the cylinder with the right pressure. And number six, we have the octopus, which is another regulator and serves for emergency. For example, when your co-diver got an exhausted compressed air on his scuba tank and needs air for ascending. For the number seven is the weight belt that is used to counteract buoyancy. Number eight, we have the submersible pressure pouch or SPG to show us how much air is left, which is very important to know when to ascend and to go back to boat. And number nine is the scuba tank filled with pressurized air that allows the diver to be underwater longer normally. In number 10, we got the fins attached to our feet, allowing us to swim with lesser effort. And lastly, the number 11, we got the wetsuit to protect us from the coldness of water, especially when the diving spot is located at cold climate regions. So we are done with the basic equipment. Let us now proceed with other accessories like dive computer for monitoring depth, time spent and remaining time. Next is the lights, dive lights to provide us the needed light, especially for those dark underwater places. Third is the dive knife for cutting ropes, lines, monofilaments, and the dive case for just in case to protect the gear from harm. You can also search other accessories that you might think you need in scuba diving. Anyways, we are done with the second topic and now we are going to take over the third topic pertaining to the skills needed in scuba diving. So may I just inform everyone that in order to in order for us to scuba dive, we must obtain for a cer cert some certain certification or C card for one to be allowed to dive and even renting the scuba diving equipment. So in order to do so, one must take a course with a recognized diving organization and after which the C card may be issued. So going back to the slide, this topic will allow us to understand the skills needed in scuba diving to avoid further risks while diving. So this so this channel gives credits to the videos involved in the further slides. So in scuba diving, we need to learn the four basic skills such as the pre-diving, descending, swimming, and the ascending. To better understand, let us see things through for each skill, starting with the, the pre-dive. So the pre-dive entails procedures that divers adhere to. This is the detailed safety check of equipment and readiness of the diver as well. So the procedures are standard, standardized and observing it step by step is a must. Simply means this is the stage wherein we need to double check the important things needed for us to have a safe, worthy, free, so the next slide is the pre-dive safety check. A pre-dive safety check must a pre-dive safety check must be done before going to the water. This is performed once a diver is wearing his or her gear, and one is done with, and this is done with the safe with, and this is done with the dive body. This is a last minute review done on the boat just before one enters the water. This is to ensure that all gears are properly functioning. This pre-dive safety check is important to be conducted with a partner so that there is no problem between your gears or his gears. So if there are problems between your and his gears, you can assist one another to have a safe diving experience. 
So let us first watch how pre-dive safety check is conducted since we aren't familiar with the terms that much and enjoy the video and we'll summarize it later. We're Shana and this is Katie. We're Hello. from uh, Dressel Divers here in the beautiful uh, Dominican Republic. And we kind of want to talk to you today about the safety checks before we get in the water. Okay, we use the acronym for this, which is B W R A F. So, Katie, we'll start with the B, which is BCD. First of all, we inflate our BCD and we make sure that all the release valves are working. So, we deflate. Okay, we have the valve on the right shoulder and the valve on the right hip. We also inflate again and pull the valve on the inflator hose itself. Okay, perfect. Seems to be working. Then we have the W, which is the weight. So we're going to make sure that it is a right hand release that in any kind of emergency you can drop your weights with one hand and that all the weights are distributed very nicely on the body so you have perfect balance in the water. Okay. Then we have the R, which stands for releases. We have to make sure that all the clips are very tight and very fastened, so we don't lose anything under the water. Perfect. Also, don't forget the tank at the back, the strap, so that the tank stays nicely in its place. Then we have the A, which stands for air. So we check with your body, your air, while you watch your manometer. If the arrow does not move on your manometer, it means that your air is good to go. Okay, then we have our last letter, which is F, which is final check. And that means that we check with our body if they have their fins and their mouth. And you are ready to get going. All, All right. right. Feeling cool. okay? Yeah. Perfect. Great. Let's go diving. So according to what we have just watched, she summarized it into it into BWRAF meaning the checking of B pertaining to the BCD if it is functioning well and the air isn't getting into any holes to have great descending. Next is the W or the weights for for the counteract of buoyancy checked if it is run well and secured. Next is the R or the releases if it is properly installed as well as the releases in scuba tanks and weights. Next is the A for air, the flow of air, and if the diver doesn't have any concerns such as trouble in breathing through his nose. And lastly is the F for final OK check. If every gear is with the diver like fins, mask, snorkel, among others. So again, this is the 5 pre-dive safety check. One is to check the buoyancy compensator, making sure that the inflator and the deflator buttons work and that the pull string is unencumbered. Number two, check the weights. Number three, check the release. Number four, check the air regulator. And five, it is the final. Okay, again, B, W, R, A, F, B, C, D, weights, releases, air, and final okay. So you can check it again on the module if you want to scan and have thorough understanding about it because some may include some may be included on the assessment. Going back to the other skills needed, we are moving on with the descending or the sinking part where we are going to achieve neutral buoyancy. First, again, let us watch the video on how to do proper 5-point descent.
And to summarize it, let us read the proper 5-point descent to recall what the feature just demonstrated. So after all the equipment has been checked, the diver should also be prepared for going underwater. This is done through the 5-point descent. These, the procedure is as follows. Number 1. Signal or the thumbs down to descend and wait for the acknowledgement from body. Number two, orient to some surface object for reference. The most exact way to, for a diver to orient himself is by using a compass. Number three, remove the snorkel and replace it with a regular mouthpiece. Number four is a time check. The timing device must be set if the divers, if using a diver's watch, then set watch visa or record start of dive. If a computer is used, the divers should make sure that the computer is turned on and ready to record. Number five, deflate the PCD just enough so that one slowly begins to sink and then exhale to help in descending. Equalize the ears, pinch blow, nose technique. This will help in the subsequent equalization. Keep BCD inflator at hand to add air to BCD as you descend. And number six, feet first in descent or at least the head is above the feet to remain oriented. So why is it important for us to know how to do the five point descent? Simply to avoid some dangerous risks that might happen if we do not follow this procedure. So getting into the content of this slide, descending to water should be done in slow and controlled way. It is what they call the controlled descent. It is using the lungs to descend and the PCD for making one self neutrally point. So why is this important? It serves as preventive measure to stay safe specifically. It is for the following reasons. Number one, if ear equalization problem arises and cannot stop descent, there is the risk of an ear bearer trauma or an injury in the ears. Number two, a diver must be able to descend slowly so as not land on the bottom. We have to remember that a gentle fin kick can injure corals or other aquatic life, destroy some delicate historical information on a shipwreck, or can stir, or can stir up sediment that will cause visibility reduction. Number three, a diver should be able to stay close with his body during descent. A diver who goes ahead of his or her body will not be able to assist a body who is making a slower descent. And number four, slower descent makes the dive more enjoyable and not stressful. Thus, it is important for us to know the specific procedure during our control descent because your objective is to have fun and of course, to have fun. Of course, for the first reason and the other reasons for extras. If we don't follow the proper descent, we can get injured, bring injury to others, not help one another, and may even cause headache instead of a smile. Moving on, we have here the following steps to ensure a complete descent. Step 1. Understand the use of buoyancy compensator device or BCD. So the BCD is used for buoyancy control, not a means for one to ascend or descend otherwise. It will further lead to loss of buoyancy control. What the divers need to do is just adjust the BCD to achieve neutral buoyancy, deflate BCD to reduce positive buoyancy and inflate to reduce negative buoyancy. Positive buoyancy is when the person moves up while, the ne while negative buoyancy is when the person moves down. Neutral buoyancy is achieved when the person does not go up or down. The next step is step 2. Do not deflate all the air from the PCD to begin the descent. So to control the descent, establish first neutral buoyancy at the surface. This is done by deflating the BCD little by little until one flow at the mask level with lungs full of air and sink a little when one breathes out. Do not deflate the BCD hastily. 
as this will make one plunge downward like an anchor with practice. One will learn to deflate BCD exactly to a point in one shot. Step 3. Exhale. Full lead to begin your descent. Full exhale to begin descent. This takes practice. Exhale all the air out of the lungs slowly and, and then hold the air out of the lungs for a few seconds. The exhale should take around 10 seconds. Expect to slowly sink near the end of 10 seconds. If one finds himself back at the surface, then deflate the BCD a little more and do the bronze again. For the number 4, re-establish neutral buoyancy. Allow oneself to descend downward until one feels he, she or he no longer control buoyancy and lungs. It means that even when inhaling, he or she will not continue. He or she still continues to sink, indicating that he or she is no longer neutral buoyant. Remember, the goal is neutral buoyancy. Thus, when one continues to inflate BCD just a little or inhale the rise slightly, take some time to find the point of neutral buoyancy. And for step 5, regroup. After a few feet of descent, re establish neutral buoyancy, then check ears and properly equalize. Check depth gauge and orient oneself if one is approaching or has reached the indentment depth. Also check the depth body. And number six, reach the destination. Descend by exhaling once again until one has reached the intended depth. So that is much to it for the ascending. Pretty much pretty much crucial as it seems but according to your views as long as you know how to control the BCD and knowing the needed concepts it is easy to design to descend without any worries so for the third one swimming just remember not to harm other living creatures and other important things underwater whenever you are swimming and during the parts of the marine world so much for that, we are going to proceed with the last one, which is the ascending pertaining to the going up or moving upwards from the underwater to the boat, just the opposite of descending. Again, to better understand what is ascending, let us first watch a video and later summarize what does ascending do in scuba diving. The sad thing about scuba diving is that eventually we must return to the surface. The ascent, if not performed properly, can potentially put a diver at risk of injury. Coming up too quickly can increase the chances of lung overexpansion injury and or decompression sickness. So it is important to use the proper techniques for safe ascents. To make a perfect ascent, consider it a two-part process. Part 1 is from diving depth to safety stop depth. Part 2 is from the shallowest safety stop depth to the surface. Before the dive, you and your buddy agreed on a dive plan. Begin the ascent process when one of you reaches previously agreed to tank pressure, bottom time, or your dive objective has been fulfilled. Give your buddy the thumbs up signal and then make sure to get an OK signal from them indicating they are preparing to ascend with you. Use one hand to keep your gauge console and or wrist computer in sight. Use the other hand to vent a small amount of air from the buoyancy compensator. If you are carrying a camera, light, or other handheld accessory, consider investing in an accessory clip so you can use both hands for ascending. Practically every diver today uses a dive computer. Be sure to understand and check your computer's safety stop recommendations before ascending. You and your dive buddy should plan to stay near one another as you ascend at a slow, safe rate to a safety stop depth. Venting air from the BC is necessary. While ascending, we know that slower is better. An ascent rate of 30 feet per minute or slower is beneficial. When you are performing a shallow safety stop, it is important that you and your buddy remain aware of your surroundings. Look up and listen for boat traffic. 
Many boats deploy a weighted hang line or bar over the side of the boat, which you can hang on to or use as a reference point to help you maintain safety stop depth. If such a line isn't available, you might also make use of a boat's anchor or mooring line. Many dive charter operators routinely stage a spare scuba tank and regulator at safety stop depth for you to use in case you run low on air while performing a safety stop. It is there for you to use if needed, so don't ever be timid about staying safe. If you are live boating, also called drift diving, using a safety sausage and reel will assist you in maintaining the proper safety stop depth. Prudent divers will know that the dive isn't finished until you are safely back on the boat or exiting the water onto shore. Stay focused on safety as you signal your buddy that you are ready to go up. Together ascend slowly while venting air from the BC is needed as you make a slow, controlled ascent to the surface. As you ascend to the surface, look up and around, checking for any boat traffic. Raise one hand above your head as you ascend the last few feet to the surface. Avoid any surfacing underneath the boat. Inflate your BC and keep your mask and regulator or snorkel in place as you signal OK to the boat crew and await their instructions for exiting the water. This video is for demonstration purposes only and not intended to replace formal scuba instruction. For more information, contact your local dive center. So much for that. You can open the module and summarize it with me to better get the process in ascending or going up towards the boat. So when one is ready to end the dive, do the following. Number one, signal the body and begin the ascent together. Number two, begin ascent while there is still sufficient air remaining in the tank. Number three, go slowly, check watch and depth gauge or dive computer and ascend with a rate of 30, 30 feet per minute rate, although US Navy dive tables allow a maximum ascent of 20 feet or 80, minute, 80 meters per minute. Number four, breathe continuously when ascending and do not hold breath. Number five, make a safety stop when one reaches 15 feet for three to five minutes. A safety stop allows time to eliminate nitrogen from the body thus decreasing the risk of decompression sickness. Decompression sickness. And number six, extend one hand overhead, look up at the surface and slowly rotates 360 degrees as one ascends. And lastly, number seven, drift slowly to the surface. When, when on surface, inflate BCD and make the signal and free enter the boat. And that is what we have for the first three topics and now we are going to discuss the health related benefits of scuba diving. Yeah. So diving on a regular basis improves and maintains the general fitness and stamina level. Exercising in water is very effective because of the water's natural resistance against our bodies. It improves cardiovascular performance and it is translated into reduced risk of heart attacks, strokes, and circulatory problems and ailments in general. Muscle tone and strength are also improved due to the movement through the water and the physical effort of carrying equipment such as the weight, weight belt and the lifting gear. So in here, we need to move our whole body, thus it strengthens several vital muscles such as our calves, hamstrings, ankles, among others. And since this is a water activity, water's buoyancy eases stiffness and joint pains which can improve flexibility and endurance. Aside from that, it indeed needed our focus on the importance of our breathing techniques which improves our cardiovascular fitness. And for the fit principles or frequency, intensity, time, and type principles, we have here the table and let us discuss some about it. It says here that improving fitness is an important goal for achieving optimum health. If, caref if carefully planned, performed, monitored, and evaluated, positive health related benefits or outcomes will be achieved and that reduces the risk to acquire health problems. 
So let us now define the meaning of the acronym of FIT. Frequency for the number of meeting in a week. Intensity, effort level of the exercise. Time, period covered in an exercise session. And type, kind of activity. So for better understanding, let me give you an example on what you can write to your FITT. I got this from Carol CarolLearning.com. So fit can be applied FITT can be applied to exercise in general or specific components of exercise. For example, below are some general FITT guidelines for weekly exercise. So for frequency, daily mod moderate exercise is ideal, but try to exercise a minimum of three to five days a week. So for intensity, moderate to vigorous intensity exercise is recommended for adults. Time, 30 to 60 minutes per day. Type, to maintain a well-balanced fitness level, perform a variety of exercises including cardio, strength, and flexibility training. So much for that. We have finished the four topics and finally getting into the last one, which is the activities. I'm just going to read the directions and if you have further questions about the activities, you can chat certain order. So this topic contains the learning task two, three, and four and the addition activity. For the task number two, for part A direction, analyze the illustration below, label each item with the correct basic equipment in scuba diving. So this was discussed in the second topic of today's lesson. You just need to identify the missing terms of the said equipment. Then for the part B direction, modify true or false. Read the following basic equipment in scuba diving with understanding. Write true if the statement is correct and false if not. Then change the underlined words that makes it wrong by writing the right answer on a separate sheet of paper. And for the learning task number three, complete the statement to summarize all your learnings for today. I'm hoping that you have something to put in there and precisely give what scuba diving really is. For the task number four, let us pretend that today you are going to scuba dive. It is an activity that you and your friends have long been planning. Write a short story of what it might be like in scuba diving. How was it like wearing the scuba gear? How did you feel before the dive or while you were ascend descending? What marine animals did you see? What colors were they? Etc. Etc. And for the additional activity, we have to type diving spots in the world. Research at least five diving spots in the Philippines. You can even ask friend who have experienced diving. Get the following information. A. Location. B. Diving centers present in the area. And number C. Marine species that you can see that, you, that can be seen in a particular diving spot. So after going to several diving spots given a chance, which among the five places that you research would you want to go and why? And we have just finished the five topics for today's lesson three, module two, aquatic recreation activities, particularly the scuba diving. I hope that you picked something useful today and let us pray for our country and world to get better for us to meet again and be taught again. My name is Dexter Rafael Ecovia from Great Old Stemming and thank you for watching.